Hey, what's up everybody? This is James. Hope everybody's having a good night. I've got a rare night off, so I thought I would take a couple of quick moments and give you a little rig rundown or a gear tour of some of the guitars that I keep here at the house and some of the amplifiers and other little doodads that I use just to keep myself occupied. I am a gear nerd, so I will try my best to not bore you to death. I'll get started quickly. That's the first thing that we have here is an ESP LTD MH1000. It's a deluxe model. It's their top of the line. It is a set neck construction with a mahogany body and a quilted maple top. We've got the abalone inlays. We've got the LTD locking tuners. The pickup configuration that I'm using in this one is a Seymour Duncan JB and a Seymour Duncan 59. I usually hang out on the bridge, but every once in a while slide up to the neck pickup for some soloing. Uh, this is a great guitar. This is the first guitar that I bought for myself that I didn't do any aftermarket modifications to, and it's probably one of the reasons why I purchased it uh, in the first place, because it basically has everything on it that I find desirable about guitars anyway. Uh, you'll soon see that I'm kind of a super strat kind of a guy. And I love 24 fret. I love tunomatic, string through body, um, dual humbuckers. That's kind of my thing. So yeah, that's my ESP LTD. Love this guitar. Its name is Annika, after Annika von Giersbergen, who is a sometimes background vocalist for Devin Townsend Project. I used to have this thing set up to uh, C, G, C, G, C, E, which is a open C major tuning and heavier gauge strings, but I had it reset up and I used nine through 42 gauge strings from Elixir, Polyweb or NanoWeb. And it looks like we're being joined by my buddy, Skitch. Say hi to the camera, Skitch. There you go. Anyway, moving right along. <clears throat> Next thing we got here is a Charvel. This is a DC-1 um, Desolation Series. It is a neck through body guitar, uh, another mahogany body, and uh, this has a mahogany neck also, and rosewood fingerboard, the abalone inlays. This also has locking tuners. This came stock originally with EMG 81 and 85, and I yanked those out and had them replaced with the Seymour Duncan Jimmy Page set. The whole lot of humbuckers is what is in here right now, and they sound fantastic. I don't have them um, coil tapped. They're just straight up but man, they sound great. This is kind of Charvel does PRS, double cutaway, 24 frets. Uh, this is more of your standard, almost like Les Paul kind of a tailpiece, and strings do not go through the body, but um, still a great resonant guitar. This is uh, actually going to be a gift for my father coming up here on Father's Day. His birthday and Father's Day land on the same day. Mine's on the 18th, his is on the 19th, but this is probably going to dad. Anyway, moving right along to the next one. This is another Charvel. This is a DX1 uh, soloist model, also from the Desolation series. It was the top of the line for it. Uh, another one with locking tuners. You'll see that as a reoccurring theme on most of my guitars. It's something I really like. Uh, not only makes string changing extraordinarily easy and quick, but they seem to uh, they seem a little bit more stable than standard tuners, no matter how high the ratio or how high the quality. Um, this uh, also was one that came stock with EMG 81 and EMG 85, and I had that yanked out and replaced with Seymour Duncan JB, and this is a Jazz. So, yeah, and it just it brought this one to life big time. Another neck through body guitar, mahogany, flat.
flame maple top, 24 frets. This has got the maple neck and the rosewood fingerboard. Of course, we've got the little dampener there. I'm a high gain dude, so sometimes put a little, get that extra string vibration past the nut. So, a piece of foam goes a long way. Just a little tip for you guys who play super high gain stuff. Um, yeah, no tone on this one. Just volume, three way selector switch. This is just step on the gas and go. This is actually one of my favorite guitars. This plays amazingly well and sounds so super huge. This is kind of like Anthrax uh, 1987 among the living kind of chunk kind of era sound and feel. Great, great playing guitar. I love this thing to death. So, moving right along. Oh, I should also uh, go back and tell you the names of the other two. The black double cutaway Charvel, I refer to as Jon Snow or Pagey because of the pickups that I put in it. And the red Charvel is R4 or red. Um, pretty simple, but that's how I refer to them as. This is an interesting story. This is actually my first guitar that I ever got for myself. This is a 1983 Kramer Beretta. You can see right there. Neptune, New Jersey, USA. This thing is seen better days. Let me tell you what, it's been beat to hell and back. The neck original was crushed. It has an aftermarket neck on it, which is a Chandler. As you can see, it has more of the Jackson, more of the old school Charvel style headstock. And, um, yeah, for a long time, this thing had a couple of different bridges on it. When I got it, it had a Kaler tremolo system on it. And um, it's um, it was easy to restring and it was easy to maintain, but I never really had the thing fully set up correctly. And, of course, I never did any Joe Sautriani, you know, Steve Vai kind of tremolo work or anything. So I never had any trouble in that used to have a Bill Lawrence L500XL in it that was yanked out by a former bandmate of mine and put into a Fender Stratocaster. So this for the longest time didn't have anything in it. Here recently I took it to my um, my luthier here, my local luthier here around Nashville, Forrest York, does some of the most amazing work ever, and um, asked him if he could bring this thing back to life or at least put it into playable condition. Um, I had a regular standard, like, Stratocaster style bridge put on there. I had a Seymour Duncan JB dropped into it and um, had him rewire it and had him re-level the neck, dress the frets, and uh, put some new tuners on it, which are some Gotos that he had around. And I can't tell you how good this thing turned out. It's and so resonant, even without being plugged in. This actually turned out way better than I thought it would, and I'm super, super happy. I've been playing this almost more than any of my other guitars here recently, and not because of the sentimental value, because he, you know, worked a miracle and it plays like an absolute beast. So yes, the Kramer. The 1983, the first guitar I ever had. I got this for $129 in Ohio, where I grew up, around Dayton, Ohio. And yeah, I was born in 1971, so that would make me 12 years old at that time. And um, this is Jack Butler, as you can tell. Looks very similar to Steve Vai's uh, guitar that he used at the end of Crossroads when he um, played both parts. and put on what I like to refer to as one of the worst acting performances I've ever seen because there was nothing more awkward than watching Steve Vai try to look like that he couldn't actually play something. I mean, come on. We know that he could smoke through that first take. And uh, <laughs> But anyway, great movie, great ending. Jack Butler, back to life. Moving on. <clears throat> okay, lately... This is my latest love affair as far as with the company is concerned. This is a, um, a newer company. This is Legator. 
that has only been around since around 2012. They are um, an outfit from Burbank, California, making guitars out of Sun Valley. And um, yeah, uh, I think most of their momentum and their biggest foothold has been due to exposure to players that are more into the extended range guitars, be it seven, eight, and nine string, and playing more of the progressive metal, uh, modern metal. People like Glass Cloud and Reflections, and uh, Within the Ruins, and After the Burial, you know, bands like that are um, are bringing these style of guitars to the forefront. This is one of their models called the Ninja, which is kind of their super strat take. It is a neck through body guitar. Once again, all the amenities that I love, which are string through, tunematic. This has the Seymour Duncan distortion uh, set in it. This is a TB6, and this is an SH6N neck position distortion. And uh, yeah, this is wonderful. I also had hip shot locking tuners put on this. And this was my first Legator that I ever got. And I tell you what, this thing is absolutely amazing. It is super light, it's super fast, and it doesn't feel like any other brand out there on the market. It feels like its own thing, and I just absolutely have fallen in love with these guys. And I'm not quite sure what it is. They just seem to have the mojo, and this is a wonderful guitar. This is very dark, uh, but also it has an incredible mid-presence. Might be due to the pickups, not quite sure, but this is one that you would want to cut through the mix if you were just playing mostly leads. And um, of course it also is great for rhythms, but it really excels in soloing. It sings like uh, 1987 prime Jeff Tate. This is wonderful. Um, <clears throat> mahogany body, mahogany neck, rosewood, fingerboard. This is uh, flame carved. Maple top, wonderful finish on that. Yes, so this was my first one. This is kind of what started it all. You'll see the illness here coming up. <clears throat> now these are special. These are actually not available from Legator anymore. And this is a model that now, if you want to get what is comparable to this, it is around $2,500. It would be known as the Opus S 475LE. This is the Opus S 350 Pro. And um, oh, I've got two of these. From what I understand, there's not too many of them. They were prototypes. I have this one, which is the purple, and it has the quilted maple cap. You can see how thick that cap is on that. Mahogany body. These are bolt-on and as you can see these are handmade in Burbank, California. One piece Canadian hard maple neck, 24 frets, real mother of pearl inlays, Legator Pro tuners, and let me tell you what I'm usually the type of guy that rips stock pickups out if they come from the company that actually manufactures the guitar. Um, they have to be pretty special uh, for me to, to keep typically whatever is, is given to me right out of the box. But these are something special. I can tell that these were wound and voiced for the particular tone wood combination or whatnot, but they're just amazing. These are some of the best sounding pickups that I've ever heard in my life. They are just absolutely amazing. I will probably not replace the pickups that are in either this one or I'll show you its counterpart right now. This one. This is the Amber Burst version of the same thing. The specs, amenities, everything are absolutely identical to this one right here. And I've developed a pretty good back and forth in communication with these guys. They've been wonderful. Uh, this is just top of the heap. They've become my absolute favorite guitars of all time.
are these two Legator Opus S's. I call them the Lopan, David Lopan, Big Trouble in Little China. It's my favorite movie of all time. And I can't say enough good things about this thing. Also, check out the big hunk of brass, if you can see that through there. Huge hunk of brass for the tremolo block that they put in both of these. Just absolutely wonderful tone that comes out very organic. And that's the one thing I can say about these pickups too, is that they, they sound like that they were just made for this. I love the wood grain that leads into the cap. These are just amazing. These are my favorite guitars, period, right now. Maybe of all time. Anyway, we'll throw those back. I think I have a few things under the bed here. And <clears throat> I'll show you. And oh yeah, let me see. Skitch, are you having a good time? Mm -hmm. Alright. Okay, we do have some. Oh yeah, very nice. I can't tell you the year what this is. This is an Ibanez Tallman that has the perloid pick guard. This has been outfitted with Seymour Duncan Zebra pickups. This is, um, I believe, a, a JB and also a Jazz, or what they refer to as the Hop Robin set. This is three-way selector switch. Lovely, lovely blue finish on that. Almost looks like a 60s race car or something with the matching headstock. This also has hip shot locking tuners. This is a wonderfully fast guitar also. You wouldn't think that this is very shreddy, but it is. This is makes you feel like you're Paul Gilbert when you get on this. You can just go noodle 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 it's wonderful so yes this is uh, one that's sitting under the bed there I believe that actually belongs to my boss I think I got a couple more under here oh yeah This is interesting. Let's see what's in here. I think I know what this is. This is either a ES335 dot or a... Ah, okay. This is an AS93 Ibanez. So I guess you would say Ibanez version of the 335. Um, oh my gosh, this is a wonderful guitar too. I love the finish on that. As you tell, blue, I love blue. Nice heel there. This is also very fast. I actually, it's a little nice and out of tune. Uh, I, might, I have a couple videos up, I think, on my YouTube channel of me noodling around on this when it first got in the proximity of the house. So, yeah, this is a, a wonderfully resonant and a wonderfully playable guitar. A little bit of a departure of what I normally go for, but still awesome nonetheless. Not quite sure. I believe these are Gibson burst buckers that were put in here. But everything else I believe is stock, including the tuners, which if I'm not remembering correctly, I'm not too crazy about. They weren't too stable, so might be one of the reasons why it's cased right now is because it's not holding tune. So, look into getting some replacement tuners for this puppy, but when it does stay in tune, it's awesome. Nice guitar there. Let's see what else we got going on in here. I think I got one more case under the bed. Oh, 
another mystery box. Not quite sure what's in here. Could be something nice. Oh, hey, what do you know? Ah, uh, almost don't need to say anything, really. Uh, American-made Fender Stratocaster with a nice wood grain finish. This has been outfitted with a JB Junior, but the middle and the neck position have remained stock because they did actually sound really good. Not a lot of cycle hum. Um, traditional, classic, beautiful, absolutely, you know, top of the heap. When you want to channel the uh, the old time gods like Clapton, Gilmore, you know, uh, Beck and Eric Johnson and Mark Knopfler and countless others out there. Uh, no substitute. You got to go with the the real deal, the real Fender Strat. So that's what this is. This is just wonderful. And it's cased, obviously. And you see me bang bang. And uh, it doesn't come out quite often, but when it does. It gets played well and gets well loved. So yes, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. We'll go ahead and throw that down there and see if we can take a trip down to my office slash studio in progress or under construction and check out a few other things like some amps and possibly a few other guitars. Oh, I should add that one of the things that I have in here just to noodle around on in bed would be a Roland micro cube with a tablet hooked into it so I can play along to some background tracks if I want to or you got it but that's a nice little thing and oh yes let's check this little puppy out here this is kinda neat this is my son Lucian's um, Kirk Hammett Signature Model Junior, which is like a three-quarter scale guitar that LTD put out. And it's got the skull and crossbones inlays. And the really cool thing about this guitar being for small hands and whatnot is that you would think they would have trouble staying in tune, but they did a cool thing by actually incorporating full-sized pickups, full-size bridge, full-size tuners, which made it much more stable and playable. That's actually a lot of fun to play, and he gets down on that quite often. So let's take a trip out here into the living room and see if I got a little living room rig here and please no comments about my house looking like the 40 year old virgin I'm gonna be 45 on the 18th okay so here's one cool thing this is a <clears throat> Yamaha this is a THR 10X model and I keep here in the living room to jam along to as you can see, you can plug a smartphone into it and then jam along to YouTube or MP3s and whatnot. These things get a great tone also, great high gain. You can see some of the switching on here. You got like two Ingles, two EVHs, kind of like a, a Mesa Boogie-ish clean flat, you got your gain controls, your master volume, your obvious three band EQ, you know, all kinds of effects. You got delay and reverb, delay and reverb mix, chorus, phaser, flange. Um, yeah, you can adjust the levels. And here's the cool thing is you can mix yourself. Yes. And 
check and see if your levels are cool with along with your playback and your guitar levels. Oh, hey, here's one of my picks too. I use the Dunlops 1.5 millimeter like Ingve Malmsteen. They cut through the strings like a real man. So, and oh, we got one more out here too. It looks like another Legator. This is a Helio model, which is kind of Legator does Paul Reed Smith. And sorry for my shaky wartime video journalist camera work here. I know it's kind of like Saving Private Ryan. This is a cool guitar. Very nice finish on this. Another flame maple top. Thick cap, nice wood binding. Now this one is also going to need some replacement pickups, trying to decide on what to put in there. I'm thinking some Alnico Pro 2s, some Slash models maybe. This is a 24 fret guitar. Mahogany neck. This is also a neck through design. Wanted to change out the tuners. Of course we got a little Star Wars graphic there to check out. Yes, nice. As you can see, you're seeing a trend here. I'm starting. I'm loving these Legator guitars. So let's go ahead and put that up. And then we'll take a walk down to my office slash. And also, no remarks on how nasty my kitchen is. I haven't cleaned yet. So this is my studio in progress and my office and kind of where I keep. All of my other stuff and where I keep my main amp rig, which is a Black Star. I use the Black Star HT Stage 60, which is, in my opinion, the holy grail of amplifiers after having countless, countless other brands. And finally find an amplifier that has everything that I need in one, including a wonderful clean section with just miles of headroom, a wonderful crunch channel, and a lead channel to die for that sounds like the universe tearing in half. I also am running this combo amp that has Celestians V-Type in the combo in conjunction with this EVH 5153 2x12 cabinet that has Celestian Heritage 30s in it. This is a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful sounding amplifier. And up here we have another Legator. This is a Legator Telecaster model, which I refer to as Prince Macchio because Prince always played a butterscotch telly and Ralph Macchio played one that was close to that color in Crossroads. Once again, another Crossroads reference. So yeah, that's wonderful. And I have had this pickup swapped out that was the original Ligator to a Seymour Duncan quarter pound pickup. And that thing sounds amazing. It is so thick and ballsy. Just absolutely wonderful. So yeah, as you probably know, or anybody who knows me personally, that my life outside of music is computers. I build computers for an awesome company called Super PC. So this is my private laboratory that I use for special projects and for clients that I want to make sure get the absolute best best of the best so yeah of course I got a little Dweezil Zappa there gotta have some playing in the background I also keep a PA system in here so I got a Behringer PA and some PV mains 
that are stuck underneath both of these tables here. So yeah, plenty of options. But anyway, I think we've seen enough of that. And I believe that it's probably about time to go ahead and play you guys out. So I'm going to plug this in there real quick and give you a couple of chuggy chuggies on this and then uh, bid you a farewell. <clears throat> I did, though, fail to show you my pedal board, so this is the extent of my pedals. I have a Boss NS2 noise suppressor, I have a Gaia Tone Metal Monster distortion pedal that I use just as a clean boost so I can play singing leads on the clean channel and of course the foot switch that controls my black star and that be about it oh so on that without any further ado Good night.